and uh, we welcome uh, dr kushal kumar sharma for this important uh, lecture series friends as you know it's a very important series and now very popular also uh, we can see uh, a lot of persons are attending uh, these uh, uh, this these lectures and uh, i i'm being requested now to host many uh, lectures but because there is a limitation of 75 lectures uh, so we are restricting now uh, friends as you know uh, we have completed around 70 lectures uh, 69 lectures and today is the 7 uh, 70th uh, lectures uh, in this series uh, this lecture series as you know is a is a very uh, for a very noble cause and that is uh, to celebrate the 75 years of Uh, india's independence and the lectures which we had in past uh, dr sharma uh, they have been uh, on various uh, topics uh, it's not only the agriculture animal science or the fisheries science but also on health related issues uh, also on uh, the motivation the yoga and many many other uh, variety of topics and uh, all by eminent personalities in the same series today again we have a very uh, eminent person a well known person in the field of uh, veterinary science and uh, that is none other than professor uh, dr kushal kumar sharma uh, friends popularly uh, professor sharma is known as uh, uh, the elephant man of asia uh, i think uh, a, a very rare title and very rare recognition anyone can get now why he is called elephant man of asia you know he is known uh, for this uh, position or for by this name because uh, he is uh, fond of uh, loving the elephants and treatment of those elephants dr sharma handles over 700 elephants every year for over 30 years for for preemptive and reactive health care my compliments to you dr sharma and that uh, you have so much love and affection for the elephants uh friends he has subdued 141 rogue elephants in most a world record by tranquilizing method over 100 wild elephants for rescue translocation and treatment he led the veterinary team in carrying out wild to wild rhino translocations in assam as the lead veterinarian under the project irb 2020 successfully reintroduced rhino population in manas national park valmiki tiger reserve in bihar dudwa tiger reserve in uttar pradesh and many more uh, dr sharma is uh, born in uh, village named barama in uh, nalbari district in assam dr sharma did his schooling in barama high school in uh, 1976 uh, preemptive uh, university from pre university from the cotton uh, college in 1978 and has graduated in veterinary science in the year 1983 from college of veterinary science assam agriculture university guwahati as the gold medalist and he had his post graduation in veterinary surgery and radiology in 1987 and doctoral degree in the same subject with elephant anesthesia as his topic of research in 1994 from the same university assam agriculture university where his work he worked as professor and head of the department of surgery and radiology uh, he has been uh, given the highest award padma shri again our compliments to you for getting this uh, unparalleled a very coveted uh, recognition of this padma shri um, many awards are uh, to his credit uh, dr sharma has widely traveled and served in the indonesia for establishing standard protocol for healthcare and management of their captive elephants and training of elephant vets serves as visiting professor in north carolina and new mexico university in us and delivered scientific papers in several international workshops and seminars dr sharma is a member of the steering committee directorate of project elephant ministry of environment and forest and the government of india and member of state wildlife advisory board assam meghalaya and tripura member asian elephant specialist group iucn member elephant uh, endotheliotropic uh, herpes virus asia working group served as vice president indian society for veterinary surgery for one term president 
Blue Cross Society, Assam, and many more, many more uh, recognitions and his achievements. Uh, because we have to listen to him, so I will not be able to uh, give more details about him because it's a long list of his achievements, of his recognitions. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sarma, for accepting our request. And uh, I will request uh, Dr. B. N. Tripathi, who is the Deputy Director General Animal Science, to chair this today's uh, session. Uh, Dr. Sarma, I, just I want to inform you that today's lecture is being attended by, uh, uh, by most of the universities and uh, being live streamed uh, on the ICR official uh, YouTube. Uh, many persons are available online, many vice chancellors, many directors, our DDGs, DDG Crop Science also I see in the list, uh, Dr. T.R. Sama, and many uh, senior officers, they are attending your lecture. And uh, we are very eager to know uh, about, uh, much more about your achievements and how you uh, came into this, uh, this particular uh, affection to the elephants. So what is your motivation and other things? So thank you very much. And the floor is yours. If Dr. B.N. Tripathi uh, agrees, we can just start your talk. Yes, yes, I can, I can start your talk. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Uh, please, the floor is yours now. Yeah, I am sharing the uh, lecture, sir. So yeah, please. Share, share. Sir, I have shared my lecture. Is it visible? Yes. So thank you very much, sir. So first of all, I pay my uh, due respect to you all for your affections. And uh, before I start my lecture, because uh, the lecture series has been named as Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. So I take this opportunity to pay homage to the great uh, of our freedom struggle. And uh, after our country, our independence, the scientists have actually uh, though we received uh, or we got the independence from uh, the colonial rulers, but our agricultural scientists, they have given us the freedom from hunger. So I pay my due respect to everyone uh, before I start my lecture. So uh, today's lecture is uh, regarding the use of modern technology in uh, like solving the uh, coveted or uh, the most contentious human wildlife conflict. So uh, actually the conflict refers to interaction between wild animals and people and the resultant negative impact on people or their resources or wild animals or their habitat. It occurs when growing human population overlap with established wildlife territories, creating reduction of resources of or life to some people or wild animals. Uh, the dimension of human wildlife is a global problem. It's not a particular technical region or genetic condition. Now, come all areas and human your, population your coexist. Is, Dr. Sharma, your voice is breaking. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, I think you, because uh, of distance of... Uh, now it will not break, probably. Can okay. the camera just step? Sir, uh, is it breaking now? This is fine. Okay, it is fine. So uh, this, uh, the conflict is common to all areas where wildlife and human population coexist and they share and impact resources. Now, dense human population in close vicinity to nature uh, seem to pose the greatest challenge. Next, please. So before we go forward to the lecture or understand the problem, let us go through some album. Next. Next, please. So this is what we have made our small planet, the uh, green art. So because of the human population growing or rather exploding, the only resources left is in the forest. So people are, uh, because their population is increasing, 
and it is competition for space. The people are going into forests, cutting the trees, burning the trees, uh, and also making different types of cultivation. This is zoom cultivation from our neighboring Nagaland, uh, because of which the, uh, the forest is devastated. And uh, not content with that, people are converting the forest for uh, like cultivation and depriving the wildlife from their natural uh, habitat. Next, please. So now why conflict is growing is not difficult to understand. This is not a rocket science. Small pockets of high wildlife density is the result and surrounded by high human density areas. Now choking of corridors and fragmentation of habitat. The corridors are linear connectivity between two different uh, wildlife habitat and this connectivity is lost because people think this is not important. Animals do not always move through those corridors, but when they use, they come into conflict. And growing intolerance, previous one, uh, growing intolerance to uh, the threat perceptions and inability by the government agency, agencies to respond immediately and effectively. So because of all this, uh, the, the conflict is growing. Next, please. Uh, so to explain all this, we have to just see one table. See, in 1804, the world population was just 1 billion. And today, at 2020, we are 8 billion. So we have increased that way. And uh, India's condition is worse. Next year, we are going to be 142 crore, that is 1.42 billion, and which will be the highest human population in the world. So this itself explains why this conflict is growing. Next, please. So uh, this human wildlife conflict, to understand, it is not a recent phenomena. It was always there. Even uh, the Kautilla Orthosaster frame, he documented about the wild elephant herds raiding crops in in 1903 alone, 24,565 people lost their lives to wild animal attacks in India. 806 people uh, were killed by tigers, 513 were killed by leopards, 463 were killed by wolves, 907 by other animals, and 22,000 people were killed by snake bites. So you see, even in that time, a uh, hundred years back, that was the figure but people were accepting that people were not complaining now people complain so uh, we know that the conflict is there next please so uh, when i show you this picture this looks beautiful uh, uh, like greenery and a herd of elephant but this is only an illusion there is uh, the inner story is a big conflict you see these elephants they have nothing to eat in the tea garden whole day 12 hours they have to spend there without a blade of grass without a drop of water and we the uh, biological scientists we know that the elephants are very uh, like poor digester what they eat passes a stool in six to eight hours so the elephant that come here in the morning by late afternoon their stomach is totally empty and they become like tsunamis and hunger is the best motivation so when they go and descend on the villages they go for food and nobody can stop them. So you can, this photo itself explains what is happening uh, in those areas where there are high density of wildlife. Next, please. So these hungry elephants descend on paddy fields or in the farmer's houses looking for food. Next. And large number of elephant herd, they descend on villages, they raid their granaries and villagers, even empty handed, they have to uh, drive the elephants. Next. So you can see in an attempt to protect their field, the people get killed that next. Villagers, they have their own devices traditionally to you know, uh, protect their properties and their farms uh, by using various weapons next. Next. So uh, not contented with that, we, since we are exploding with railway lines, we need different uh, structures. And uh, definitely these were the wildlife habitat. So you can see the uh, elephants are crossing a railway line. And as a result, what we see? Next. So elephants get killed by the steel monsters. Next. And since there is no buffer zone between the tea gardens and 
and villages. Elephants come and unfortunately get killed, sometimes malicious, sometimes accidental. So, uh, the, uh, you know, I can go on telling the dimensions of the conflict, but what are methods by which we is this? Definitely, if we talk about management or uh, handling of the human wildlife conflict management, the most important thing is, of course, habitat management or restoration of habitat as well as restoration of the corridors. So, which is very difficult to achieve because the population we have uh, allowed to explode like this. And uh, next to that, we have various firefighting mechanisms. So, where we technology, where we use uh, other methods by which we try to overcome or protect our life and uh, properties. So physical barrier is one way by which we uh, do uh, protect. So there are different physical barriers, biological barrier, mechanical barrier, electrical. I will explain by photograph coming. Then early warning system for which we uh, radio color the matriarch by and uh, know what the movement of the elephants, then come the population management. So if we perceive that a certain person has become really unmanaged, we may even consider cutting or mass caps. We may consider uh, sterilization program. Uh, we uh, undertake translocation program or immunocontraceptives. Next. So this is a, a schematic diagram of a traditional method of elephant capture that was used in Assam uh, in the past before the Wildlife Act came force. Next, please. <clears throat> so uh, then we have different, uh, no, next, next, yes. So this is another method, uh, what is called a Kheda method of elephant capture. This was also introduced by the British in uh, Assam. So way back uh, during British time, that if the larger animals were also captured. Next. So uh, this is again one uh, picture, beautiful picture of management of conflict. So here it is a traditional method, actually, not any high technology. So you can see the Kunkis, they are used to drive a large uh, herd of wild elephants. So uh, I was talking about the use of technology. So this is the radio collar. So we have put a radio collar to the matriarch of a herd. Uh, and because of that, since we can get the signal from this and get it through satellite, continuously we know the uh, mo uh, movement and position of the elephant herd. And then we can take the protective measures. Next. Uh, a radio colored bull. Next. So this is yet another technology, thermal camera. So this is a very useful tool uh, in the management of wildlife. So this device forms an image using infrared radiation similar to a common camera. So this, is, uh, give, this gives a monochrome image and we can use at night because it works on the temperature generated by the animal. So if you see the next image, so this is an elephant at night when you see through a thermal image camera. Otherwise in the darkness, you can't see anything. When you use a thermal camera, you can see this. So this is a very useful tool uh, to uh, visualize or handle wild animal at night. Next. And besides that, of course, uh, physical barrier, this was from Kotak. So a physical barrier is created. It's an elephant resistant trance. Actually, this also has been devised uh, with the knowledge of the biology of the elephant. As we know that elephants they have vertical orientation of their limb bones. They don't, don't have the leverage, they can't jump. So only a six feet uh, wide trends can be sufficient for deterring elephants from crossing one side or another. So this uh, not only protects the elephants from coming to the village and also the villagers will also have a physical barrier. They can't penetrate into the habitat of the uh, uh, wild animals. Uh, besides that, these trances can also be used as irrigation. Next. So this is a very nice uh, traditionally available biological tool. This is a thorny bamboo, very uh, quite available in the north uh, eastern region. So this thorny bamboo can be propagated by tissue culture method, and those areas, uh, or if we want to uh, create a physical barrier, we can create physical barrier in a very short time by using this thorny bamboo. Next, please. 
So these are sometimes we are using power fencing. Then uh, couple with that the elephant resistant fence. Next. So I was talking about the uh, solar power fence and energizer. So this can be used uh, very effectively. Not only elephant, all other animal can be protected. So we can protect our villages, we protect our uh, house and other properties. Next. So here you can see the elephants are on the other side of the fence. They, they will never try to, this will not kill, but this will give a uh, shot. And uh, it's a very high voltage shot, but the, it's, it doesn't kill. Next. So here it is a night gun light. This is a very small device and very cheap. It hardly costs you dollar. So at night, the light will mimic the uh, eyes of a predator. So Sonitpur district, we have tried this and we found this very effective because the elephant, they think that these are maybe tigers and uh, during daytime, it automatically switch off. So this is a very useful technology by which we can uh, protect the farms of our uh, pedophiles. Next. So we use the elephants. Uh, so uh, very important tool that we have is the remote injection technique. So tranquilizing gun. So this has become the mainstay of the wildlife management system. Next, please. So you can see a rogue elephant can be uh, subjugated by use of tranquilizing gun. From a distance, we can uh, like play drugs and we can uh, control an animal. So uh, over the years, this has become the main technology in managing wildlife. So you can see one uh, such bull a killer bull being uh, subjugated. Next. Then sometimes we come across uh, very big uh, bulls that may become a killer. So such animal, if it is not possible to keep because of the degradation of forest and all that, we may capture and translocate. So this can be lifted into a truck uh, uh, under the uh, like level of anesthesia. Then we can release in a destination uh, so that you know, the uh, problem can be handled. Next, please. Next. So in a similar way, uh, of course, we don't do this uh, because of the objection of the welfare group, but this is also a technology and it has been found that animal for a short distance even can be uh, used upside down by using the levers. So in African country, they are doing this uh, for short duration distance uh, translocation they use. Next. So uh, similar way, putting the animal in rail. So I talk about mass capture. So this, uh, I was involved in way combust in Indonesia, where as many as 52 elephants were captured by tranquilization method. So because the government of uh, Indonesia were contemplating to kill those elephants. Uh, so the IUCN, I came as a member of the IUCN and helped them in capturing all those elephants and training. So this is also one method, uh, modern method by which a large number of uh, life uh, could be saved. Next. Now, uh, human leopard conflict is a very common thing, particularly in many areas, even in Mumbai, in Guwahati as well. So we have a lot of incidences of the leopard incident. So we can tranquilize and uh, next. So, but these are not free from dangers. So here I, I am showing you uh, a picture from West Bengal where uh, the team was attacked by the leopard. Next. So the people, because of the conflict, the tiger is the, uh, our country, our royal animal, our national animal. You see how the people are becoming aggressive towards the tiger. In fact, they kill it. It is from Dudua, uh, also nearby areas. So a leopard is being killed by the farmers. Next, please. And not just that, you know, the uh, beer, not only in cities in America and all that, they come out for food. Even here, we are having problems because of uh, hibernation problem. Because just before they go for hibernation, they need a lot of food for good nutrition, for fat reserve. Now they don't have. So they can't go for hibernation and they come out and have conflict with the farmers. So here also the tranquilization method comes in handy. And uh, even in Manas National Park, uh, this year, uh, year itself, uh, our teams, they have captured and translocated as many as eight here. Next. Uh, see, beer human conflict. Next. 
And then monkey menace is another very big problem. Uh, many parts of uh, India, we have monkey menace. So you can, uh, you probably have learned in Himachal Pradesh, they have already sterilized 100, uh, 130,000, like 130,000 uh, Siamese animals, and they have controlled the population slowly. So here also, Assam government has formed, we are contemplating. So here, actually, the laparoscopic surgery technique will be utilized by which uh, very promptly uh, and safely the monkey, the female monkeys will be sterilized to contain the population. Next, please. So we have the other precious or prestigious animals that is rhino. And many people, I have just given the picture because many people may not uh, even realize that the rhinos existed in the entire northern India on western side up to uh, Kandahar in, uh, in what is called Afghanistan. So when Babar entered India, in one day, he killed four rhinoceros in Kandahar. So today, because of the advancing desiccation and change of climate, so they are contained only in some areas. Next, please. So I am showing you the population and only viable population probably you can see in Kajiranga National Park and some small population in different areas. Zaldapara National Park in Bengal has a good population, but the habitat is not very good. So we need to manage this population. Otherwise, they come into conflict because they stray out. Next. So here I am showing you one uh, rhino that strayed out into Guwahati. So we had to, in spite of uh, the rhino being in deep water, we had to take uh, the chances and rescue the animal from deep water. Next. The same case. Next. So uh, we have our own technology, but as I have said, uh, in Africa and other countries, developed countries, they have gone ahead. They have specially devised such vehicles that the vehicle itself has the pulley and lift and uh, like they can tranquilize the animal, immediately lift it on the truck. And I think the way uh, in India also uh, the conflict with animal is growing, we may have to think of similar uh, facilities. Next, please. So uh, here by helicopter for short distance, uh, animals can be translocated. Next. So uh, of course, uh, here in India, use of helicopters and all that are not very common. Though in some places they have used, we have used helicopter for uh, translocation of tiger. Uh, even in Bangladesh, they have used helicopter for darting of elephant. Of course, our elephants themselves are like helicopters. They are very safe uh, to take us to the forest and by which we can do tranquilization and other methods. Next. So uh, I am talking about the rhino translocation. This is the rhino that we have to translocate next. Uh, and it's not an easy job. You need to have a team, a well need team and co having communication. <clears throat> so the team has located the rhino and they have informed next. Then the dirting team will go with the tranquilizing gun and I'll come to that. You have specific drugs for that. These are the dirting sites where you can dart because the, the thick skin, you can't shoot everywhere. Next, please. So you can see the dirt hitting the rhino. Next. And uh, in a short time, within six to seven minutes, uh, when you use the specific drug, the rhino will go down. Next. So you go nearby and see the level of immobilization. Next. Next. So uh, various things you have to do when you are translocating, like radio collar. Even in uh, smaller mammals, also radio coloring is necessary because we need to monitor the movement of those animals. Next. So besides that, a lot of veterinary procedure are to be carried out. Blood collection for uh, the biological taste, then uh, radio coloring, microchip implantation, and all that. Next, because we have to ensure the safety as well as we have to ensure monitoring of the animal post release next so pulse oximetry uh, during the anesthesia procedure whatever procedures on the animal has to be lifted on a sledge next so this is the structure of the so a lot of science is involved in all this it is not just design so when it's design, we did mistake again we restructured and all that because uh, in such areas you cannot use uh, a Trolley has, has a wheel, so it has to be slazed. So uh, now, after a lot of uh, like experience, 
we have come out uh, very effective trolleys and all that. Next. So you can see a area just behind the animal sliced off by this ACB. Next. So the animal is turned over. Next. It is there, it tied, and the uh, JCB will pull it to the case. So it has been pulled towards the case, and now it will be put inside. Next. So this is the uh, wooden structure or of the case where the animal will be put for translocation. Next. So this is the case. Now it is being pulled through uh, into the case. So very interesting, uh, but very smooth technology. And uh, here in Assam, we have mastered this and fine tune and we have done more than 50 such translocations and i'm proud to uh, tell you that without a single casualty next so the animal is safely inside the case next and the case is being loaded into the truck next and finally taking a 300 kilometer journey and even in the journey you have to maintain protocol so that the safety of the animal can be ensured and the animals, the uh, actually a mother and son group, and they were rescued together and shifted to Manas National Park and being released. Next, please. So after release also, your job is not over. You have to monitor the animal may stay. Next. So various methods, so radio coloring, then telemetry receiver. And you also have a camera trap. So camera trap is not only for uh, movement, but for other smaller mammals also, you can see the population estimation and all that. Next, please. Then physical restraint, I'll very shortly, physical restraint is not something very new. It is old, mostly used for snakes. Next, you go on, go on. So you use uh, various physical devices like net and trap. Next, so various types of, everybody is familiar with this type of thing. Then you have cannon net that you can fire from a distance and will drop on the target. Next. So dead capture for antelope in open grassland in Africa. Next. Box trap for smaller mammals. Then catch all poles. Next. Cat graspers. Next. Then comes the chemical restraint, which has been fine-tuned uh, to a great extent. And I must say this is also the contribution of the veterinary scientists over the years. And next, please. So basically, uh, these drugs that we administer from a distance has to be administered intramuscularly because we have to dirt. And then uh, most drugs administered uh, in wildlife are done through intramuscular route. Next. Some of the anesthetics are used intravenously. But here, you have that option. And you don't have the option of uh, pre-anesthetic evaluation of the animal. So the safety of the drug is much a necessity. So various equipments are to be used uh, to basic principle is to avoid disturbing the animal, uh, uh, the induction phase and uh, the effectiveness of the drug to be injected. Drugs can be injected using a handheld syringe. So these are all technology, handheld syringe, of course, everybody knows that, but pole syringe or jab stick, blow pipe, pneumatic gun and gun powered uh, charged gun. Next. The handheld uh, syringe that I said uh, we use it, but disposable syringe. Next, please. Pole syringe. Suppose animal is uh, two meter away. You can't reach to the animal. And suppose you insert your hand, the animal will scratch or bite. So here, this is basically an extension of the normal syringe. And, and when uh, this can be used only when the animal is contained in a trap. Next. So you have various designs of pole syringes. So actually, as I said, these are extension of our normal hypodermic syringe. So you can only inject from a meter or two meter away or even more. Next. But animal has to be cornered. Otherwise, it is very difficult or it may cause injury. Then drug administered inside the crate. Suppose, for example, I got a from Kajiranga National Park to Manas National Park. Now, in between, somewhere the animals uh, have become nervous or started disturbing. Then we have to give some sedative drugs. How we will give? At that level, cannot use a dirt gun because it will be injurious. So in, in such situation, we need a zap stick by which we can administer the sedative drug. Next, please. 
so uh, we also have the blow gun and here actually it's a very simple form of pneumatic gun you your lung power by which you blow and the syringe flies and hits the animal and administers the drug next so various types of modern guns that are generally used for other large animal next so the assortment of accessories next and these are all the uh, like blanks cartridges the pneumatic dart delivery so for other thin skin animal these are used uh, you have rifles up to 100 years you can shoot with that pistols uh, with short range next uh, uh, darts with explosive discharge that I have just shown you. Uh, we use small explosive, uh, explosive cap uh, between the plunger of the syringe and the cap. Uh, inject speed is, see, it's very fast, 0 0.001 second. So uh, this may cause tissue damage because it is a little bit traumatic. So experience is required. Next. Then uh, we have the centrally acting compounds uh, that are being used and becoming very popular in large animal. Of course, uh, we here in Assam, we only use for rhinos uh, because we have undulating areas, we have rivers, so our animals should not go and uh, sink in water. Uh, but rhino, we take protection uh, because it is relatively manageable size. So the opiates are potent synthetic opiates and used for immobilization of ungulates including rhino. Next, uh, cyclohexamines, ketamine, tylatamine, very popular. The only limitation is that you do not have a reversal agent for this. Agent. But we use in combination with some uh, other alpha-2 adenoceptor agonic uh, anesthetic drugs. Next. Then these alpha-2 uh, drugs, dilazine and mididomidin are very popular. And these are potent drugs and safe drug. Even if you wish, you cannot kill an animal by overdosing also. So these are beautiful drugs. And I must say that uh, if you talk about the development of technology, these are our technology. Without which today, uh, the wildlife department can manage wildlife. Next. Uh, we also go for various drug combinations and uh, synergistic combinations and all that. Next. The drugs are complementary. And I, have feel, I feel proud that we have standardized drugs uh, for every species, different type of drug, but uh, after a lot of experiments, our scientists, they have concluded that this type of combination is best for this type of uh, animal. So I'll not go in detail. Next, a similar script, so rhino and elephant and every animal, you name it, we have the drug. The problem is that availability of these drugs are because these drugs are not manufactured in India, procuring from abroad, first thing, they are expensive. Second thing, a lot of of procurement. But anyway, we are managing with that. Uh, maybe in future, things will be better. Next. Then uh, an ideal drug or drug combination by the present day wildlife vet. Uh, so these are, of course, theoretical. Next. Uh, disadvantage of chemical restraint. Uh, difficulty in getting closer to the subject because the animal is dangerous. So uh, animal, sometimes we do not use drugs. Next, please. Next. So uh, say this is uh, swamp deer we are translocating. Next. And most important thing is that when we are planning to use drugs for wild animal, we have to take the responsibility of the life of that animal because these are uh, scheduled animal and any harm to this animal, uh, you are responsible. So you have to take the responsibility of the life of that animal. Next. And healthy animals are to be identified when you go for immobility. And finally, the technology, which is new, that is the immunocontraceptives. Wherever you think a population has increases, we have immunocontraceptives, GnRH vaccine, it is called can be used both in male and female. The protocols are available, uh, but in India, we, we are yet to use, uh, even for experiment. One project was sanctioned by Project Elephant Directorate. For some reason, it didn't materialize. But now, uh, many foreign countries, they are using the GNR vaccines for effective population controls, where we can provide space to the animals 
we may have to think of population control for larger animals. For smaller animals, of course, we can go for uh, the uh, physical sterilization technique. Next. So with this, I conclude my lecture, uh, a combination of many things, but my focus was on the use of modern technology for management of the conflict with animals. So I conclude with this and I now uh, send it back to uh, Delhi for uh, any questions that would like to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Dr. Sharma, for this excellent talk for your love and affection towards the wildlife and especially elephant and not only elephants you have told many other animals i know and uh, even the small animals uh, so dr tripathi sir if you say uh, if you allow we can take some questions i think that's all we can we can take some questions no there are some yeah. questions in chat so uh, uh, dr murli is asking how to contain the population of peacocks, uh, which is havocing uh, our grain fields? Any suggestion, Dr. Sama? Sir, peacock is our national bird and it uh, is a civil one species. So I think uh, before we uh, plan anything, it has to be a big uh, you know, political decision. The government has to decide. But the sterilization uh, of the bird is not impossible. Even, uh, even uh, hormonal implants can be used, but we can also physically sterilize and capturing these birds are not difficult. So we can uh, sterilize the birds, the females, and then we can use a metal tag so that we can identify that yes, this animal was sterilized uh, like that. I think uh, that can be one solution, but in many areas, uh, peacock are not to be seen so maybe translocation can be an, can be an option. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Uh, Dr. Rathor is asking, how to ensure the safe forest for the wildlife, which is a big uh, challenge. Yeah, excuse me, sir. How to ensure... What was the question? How to ensure the safe yeah. forest uh, for, the, for the wildlife, which is a big challenge. Yes, sir. Indeed, it is a big challenge. But the solution I have uh, told you at the very beginning, because until and unless we be behave in a responsible way, we are behaving uh, irresponsibly. We are just increasing the human population. And when we have become number one in India, uh, in the world, we still don't stop. We have to do something, uh, act uh, rationally, and we have to cut down our population because the way we are going, we are not leaving any space for any other species. So this is quite uh, selfishness. And yeah. in this selfish behavior of the human being in our country in particular, and as a whole, the whole world, I think uh, we were uh, vanishing. All the species will be extinct. And uh, ultimately, we will also be extinct because one yeah. species cannot live alone. It's a biodiversity which is required. And every species has to space for the other species. Yes, Geo yes. or Ginado. Geo or Ginado. Saiga, Saiga. And now, uh, Dr. Sarma, in the meantime, can you just suggest something? Uh, because there is a monkey menace uh, in Delhi also. In parliament, in every ministry, everywhere you will find uh, monkey. So, uh, do you have any solution? What is the there? solution, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is solution. In fact, uh, two of our states, particularly one state, our Himachal Pradesh, they have adopted the monkey sterilization program some 10, 12 years back. And when they started uh, sterilization program, they did some mistake. Initially, they did by the open uh, surgery method and monkey, they do affiliation. And later on, they learned that the, uh, and, uh, the laparoscopic surgery is the answer. And I know that by now they have done almost 1,40,000 sterilization. And uh, now the population decline has become visible because in India, uh, <coughs> monkey is our... Mm -hmm. So everybody feeds them and, you know, that God. increases God. their population. Num yes. Hanumanji, num <coughs> number two is in the, uh, like in the forest, mm. the, for the, the fruit-bearing trees are also being failed. <coughs> so yeah. the, the monkeys, they do not have 
much yeah. food in the forest so they are forced to come uh, to our villages and our towns so similarly yeah. in delhi also uh, because we cannot kill the uh, thing but since it is a capital region so two things we can do we can capture the monkeys we can sterilize them and we can translocate them to some other areas and make monkey colonies somewhere where they will not be able to come back and automatically the population will decline and this sterilization this procedure is very simple we can do it and in fact uh, i i feel uh, proud to tell you that assam government has also planned a monkey sterilization program in assam mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, you can uh, send a, a solution uh, and a, a proposal to the central government also. Hey, no, 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 no. I can share my I can share our proposal that I have given to Assam government, and so I can share with you, sir. Yeah, Doctor Tripathi has to say something. Yeah, Doctor Sharma, what about the blue bulls, Nilgai? Because they also menacing a in a farmer's field. Sir, okay. Nilgai is work. another big problem because. Uh, it called guy so people uh, <laughs> think that it is go hatta like if you kill them it will be go hatta go bad so that uh, in india nobody likes to do and i also have information in fact uh, i objected to that like bihar government want uh, they have allowed uh, some culling of the blue bull uh, because they are damaging our farms uh, but uh, the, there are a lot of objections like the farmers themselves have objections to uh, killing of the blue bull so therefore even in bihar they could not continue and i think even even in up they have uh, practiced some uh, cases but they stopped uh, here also we can do sterilization program but we need big fund for that because this is a big animal they do not easily allow themselves to be captured but our veterinarians can capture and sterilize them population decline will uh, be you know uh, visible slowly not immediately but i i i know that uh, the blue bull menace is a menace it's not an ordinary conflict yeah we agree uh, dr uh, namnithan is asking uh, while translocation how long the animal can be carried uh, upside down yeah that is a good question actually in india we have never carried animals upside down uh, because we are not sure of that and aesthetically this looks very bad and even you know in our uh, our country the welfare lobby is very strong so if we start doing that there will be lot of hue and cry and they will drag us to the court uh, uh, just like i know uh, one african elephant is there in delhi uh national zoo capital zoo so one african elephant uh, and i am told that a 16 year old girl has gone to the supreme court planning about that the uh, elephant is badly kept and all that as if she knows how it is goodly kept uh, but anyway so here everybody knows and those who really do not know they know more so the uh, problem is that so uh, it is uh, you know Uh, if it is properly done yeah. scientifically done it is not impossible we can do it and translocation like even in africa when they carry animal upside down they do only for a short distance suppose if it is a long distance then they don't do it suppose there is a river through which the normal carries is difficult so even in uh, the middle of brahmaputra we had one case uh, of a stray rhino so in that case we have hired the services of indian army and uh, we plan to just capture the rhino there and just hang upside down and bring it to the other bank of the river and probably the rhino didn't like the idea and uh, you know she decided to swim herself and uh, she came to the other side and we captured and translocated in a normal way so <laughs> we didn't uh, have the experience yeah. as of now <laughs> but for a short distance it is safe uh, uh, doctor uh, our director in nrc mithun is asking uh, what is the cost involved for night guard fencing whether it will be applicable for the mithun also of course sir but night guard fencing we don't use we use night guard camera or night guard binoculars 
uh, our uh, even our Kajiranga National Park, we have night guard binoculars and uh, night guard cameras. The fencing that is actually power fencing, solar powered fencing. Uh, these are not very expensive. Uh, only thing is that maintenance is required because the grass will grow from the bottom and they will discharge the cable. So just to avoid that, you have to keep cutting the grass so that the electricity is not discharged. And only thing is that you need, uh, you need it solar panels and an energizer, which is uh, like depending on size of the area, uh, it is below one lakh, very uh, cost effective method. But for elephant, this is not foolproof because elephants are the most intelligent animal. And over the time, they realize that uh, we can overcome. So what they do, they bring one uh, pole from somewhere or a tree they uproot and throw it against the wall, uh, fencing. So the fencing is broken, the electricity is discharged, and the entire herd will merrily cross over. Uh, it is very difficult to uh, contain the elephants uh, once they realize that we can cross this barrier. But other animals can be contained. Uh, Dr. Sama, how many species uh, of the elephant are known, especially in India? India, we have one species only, sir, that is the Asian elephant, Elephas maximus. Uh, in fact, not only India, the entire Asian countries, uh, we have Asian elephants in 13 range uh, countries across Asia. So India has the highest population, like uh, the total uh, Asian elephant population worldwide is 48,000. Uh, in India alone, captive and wild together, we have 30,000, 27,000 wild and 3,000 captive elephants. So India has more than two thirds of the elephant population and the other elephants that is uh, in our neighboring countries also, like Nepal, Bhutan, or Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Bangladesh, and Indonesia, Thailand, and all that. So altogether, uh, even in China, they are. So 13 countries, they, uh, they are there. Genetically and phenotypically, they are almost uh, differences in India. We have two types of males. One is called Tasker. They have huge prominent tusk. These are actually modified incisors. And uh, the other type is Makhanas. They don't have well-developed tusk. But if you go to Indonesia, all the males are tuskers. Uh, this may be genetic selection or uh, some other reason, but genetically the elephants are same. One Dr. Prithiraj Fernandez uh, from Sri Lanka, he carried out a genetic study and he found only the elephants of Borneo are different. In Borneo, they have pygmy elephants. They are smaller in size and uh, their height, the like average height is 5.5 to 6 feet. And uh, they are not as hostile as the other Asian elephant types. Uh, and in Africa, they have two types of elephants, African elephant. Uh, one is the bush elephant, other is the uh, savanna elephant. Uh, genetically also, they are different. Uh, how the elephant can contribute in maintaining the wildlife? Uh, I, I, th I think your question is how the elephants can be used in managing wildlife, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, very much useful. Actually, uh, I told you in India with our limited resources, we, even if we you, uh, like desire, we are not given a helicopter. And even if a helicopter is given, so in our type of forest, which is canopy in nature, we cannot use a helicopter for various activities. But the elephants are very useful. We can take elephants uh, patrolling our area for uh, you know, capturing, translocation. Uh, and if you come to uh, parks like Kajiranga or Manas, or say, for example, Dudua or Kanha Tiger Reserve. So in all those areas where there are dangerous mammals like say tiger, say rhino, in such a situation, elephants are very useful. You cannot manage a park like this without the help of the uh, trained uh, captive elephants. They are very useful indeed. And also, I told you, I have shown you a picture. Uh, human elephant conflict is a big issue. And we can very safely use 
ये कुंकीज़, the train captive elephants for managing the wild herds. We can drive them where uh, our life uh, and that of the villagers' life as well as their properties are safe. Uh, Doctor Pralay Mandal is asking. Uh, we are taking this as a last question. Uh, is there any SOP, standard uh, operating procedure, for providing oral administration of anti-TB drug in zoo animals? Because some zoo administration uh, administering anti-TB drug to zoo animals. Is there any SOP for administering this anti-TB uh, drug without screening for animals? Uh, actually, the anti-tuberculosis drugs are uh, like used in many zoos across India, of course, with uh, permission from the central zoo authority. And uh, unfortunately, I know Pralay Mandal, he's from Bengal, and we also work together. He knows it. He worked in uh, Jaldapara National Park. So actually, most of the zoos, the biggest problem is tuberculosis. Even in Guwahati Zoo, we had big problem with tuberculosis. But after oral uh, medication, it became possible because tuberculosis confirmation is also a very big problem. You do not have the BSL-2 stage laboratory everywhere and like identifying or demonstrating the mycobacterium uh, germs are very tedious and almost difficult for many zoos to afford. But the yeah. anti-tuberculosis <clears throat> does are affordable. They are not very costly. And uh, it mean we can get it from the human medicine. So that is why people are using. And this has the support from Central Zoo Authority. So it is not illegal, actually. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sharma. Uh, may I request uh, Dr. Tripathi now uh, to uh, give the chairman's remark, concluding remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Agrawal. I think today, Thank you, sir. you are seeing uh, more than around more than 225 people that joined on this platform only. And uh, so, uh, such an uh, interesting lecture. First, we'd like to congratulate Dr. K.K. Sharma for, uh, for attracting so many people, uh, audience, uh, to his lecture. Uh, and today we have a bounce audience. We have got uh, many senior people, uh, our esteemed DDG, uh, Dr. T.R. Sharma, is there, and a few vice chancellors uh, uh, of Galaico University, uh, Professor R. Chandra Babu, and then Professor S.K. Rao. And uh, I'm seeing the many directors of ICR Institute across, you know, across division, from crop science, horticulture, animal science, so many directors are looking and and a large number of scientists, and also from many people from KVKs, and also universities, so professors also joined, and some retired people also like Dr. Lal Krishna and others have joined. So, so all, all have listened to your lecture, Dr. Sharma, so the big congratulations to you. And uh, now we have seen that how Dr. Sharma has uh, now having worked for more than three and three and a half decades, and, uh, and uh, he has justified that how, why he is called the elephant, elephant Mahat. No. So, and, and he has been given a uh, highest testing award uh, for Padam Sri. For that, we also congratulate from a core of our hearts. We are veterinarians very happy that, uh, that uh, veterinarians like who are working in the field, working, working for, the, uh, for the wildlife and also for the animals, they are also uh, getting uh, Padam Sri awards. So, that, that's a great achievement. And uh, from all fraternity of veterinary animal scientists, we, we congratulate Dr. Sharma. Uh, well, Dr. Sharma, topic was very interesting, uh, as earlier also, uh, as you could see the number of participants here. And uh, wildlife, human wildlife conflict, how to manage it. And he has, he has given one example that during 1804, we had a 1 million population, and 2050, we are going to have almost 10, 10 billion population, so almost 10 times. So land remains same, forest is decreasing, Every, everything remains, but population increasing. So certainly this is all, you know, uh, if, you, if you just, you know, balance human and the wildlife, then human is the more responsible for all these than, than the wildlife. So, so we, we, we are the culprit so that uh, we, we are enclosing forest 
and improvement uh, really, you know, once their size is, once size is decreased, uh, they, they do not get proper forage and feed and water. And also, when when the ecosystem, ecosystem balance is not there in the, in the forest, then they, they come out in, in search of food. For example, if you know, if you don't have carnivores in forest, so certainly herbivores, herbivores will be more. And, and when herbivores will be more, they will, they will all you know, destroy vegetation. And after that, they will come out of the forest. And, and so, so similarly, you know, there is a balance in the ecosystem. We have, we have, a, we have already a pyramid-like structure that how in the, in the pyramid uh, and forest and, and flora and fauna, each creature, each wild, each life is important in the system. And that, that is why when it is disturbed, then our ecosystem will disturb, and then this, this conflict starts coming. Dr. Sarma has started, you know, very, very, uh, very perfectly by the definition of what is conflict, and then he has defined that how uh, human wildlife conflict uh, looks like, and uh, he has given many examples that that uh, by doing a lot of beautiful pictures, and he really, you know, took us around the forest and wildlife. And uh, given so many examples from uh, some elephants, some rhinoceros, and also snake, and uh, and uh, so many others also, and he also uh, also described the methods of uh, how how to manage this uh, uh, human wildlife conflict uh, by by different methods like you know habitat management, physical barrier, early warning system, and uh, and population management, and and you know and, and finally. Even Interception and how to manage it, uh, and the thermal camera, the trend formation. Uh, see, uh, we, we know that the wildlife conservation is a prime agenda for the government, and we are all doing 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 well in this direction. But still, we lack many many infrastructure and facilities to deal with. We, Dr. Sarma, has told that how he has, he has improvised, he has, he has fabricated different different uh, different structures, different equipments to deal with. And, uh, and and if you go for the anesthesia, he is, he is specialized in anesthesiology, you know, anesthesia. So every animal has got, you know, kind of video sequency, and every animal has got a different dose, different system. And that is why wildlife people, they don't allow their animal, if you very wildlife in captivity, they don't allow the animal to touch it, don't, don't allow anything to be given to them. So I, this difficulty I, I, I faced when, when we were for the, uh, for testing our COVID vaccine in animals, in, in leopard and tiger and lion. So uh, they, uh, with all difficulty, they allowed to give a few animals because they are scheduled one animal. So they are very precious also while, while they are in, they are in wild, they are in the forest and in the captivity. They are very important for all of us. Dr. Sharma has also, uh, I mean, answered all the questions and uh, by, by different, you know, the issue there are some more questions I was seeing in the chat box. So, but with the paucity of time, we cannot take all. But certainly, the lecture has been impressive and uh, very, very interesting also. Uh, and perhaps everybody has enjoyed this lecture. And also, people will like to develop some love for the wildlife, no? Uh, the way sometimes we have seen in, 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 in the video, in the film, in the pictures, uh, so that how people are aggressive, they kill animal leopards, or lions, or tigers, poachers are there. Uh, so, so that, that there are threats to wildlife also. Uh, and, and for all those things, we have got an uh, act also, and uh, of course, we have got the rules also, conservation law also. So, uh, so with this, I think uh, today's, today's is, uh, is, is talk was quite comprehensive, and uh, it has opened a new area of area for research also for the scientists who are sitting here. And, uh, and perhaps Dr. Sharma may be getting a lot of calls after this talk uh, because they will be interested to work in some, some areas. and. Uh, and perhaps in, in, in uh, maybe in the in the surgery or in medicine or or, or in also and uh, the other way around that wildlife wildlife is important to maintain if they are also threat also because they they are also though, uh, I mean the habitat of diseases also so whenever we talk of any disease uh, disease control program we always we take into consideration wildlife also. Because if, if, the, if the disease, you know, disease of pathogen carriers are in wildlife, then perhaps uh, our surveillance program, our disease control program may not be succeeded. So therefore, wildlife, wildlife is also important for, uh, for you know, uh, whenever we take up any national program for disease education. So um, I think uh, with this, uh, I will not speak more on that because we also develop many 
drugs, how we're going to try different combination of drugs, individual drugs, combination of drugs, all he has been trying perhaps last three and a half, four decades. And uh, I both experiences must, I hope that it must have been used by other other people, other in the, in the wildlife sciences and uh, those in the activity. Tuberculosis is a great problem in wildlife, especially in deer. And it is quite productive tuberculosis in deer. So I think uh, uh, this is also one of the issue that even if you are able to control tuberculosis in humans or animals, how to control them, them in, in the wildlife. So that is also really search out uh, some methods, methodology, some drugs, and maybe not that exactly vaccines would be there to control tuberculosis in wildlife. So I think uh, we must give a big hand to Dr. B.K. Sharma because uh, of enlightening us for, for so many things on, on wildlife, and especially on elephant. And with this, I, I thank the organizer, also to provide me this opportunity to chair this session. I, and also Dr. Agrawal, because he has been you know, doing 70th, this is 70th lecture. And uh, at, uh, we were able to manage few lectures also in animal science and veterinary science. So that people, he has been, he has been, he has been lectured from all walks of life, you know, which is not only science, agriculture, craft, horticulture, animal, art, culture. And, uh, and even, even different acts, different commissions, people have been coming here. Uh, some, some spiritual people have also come, come in this, at this platform. Uh, I mean, from learning people, physics, mathematics, economics, so many, uh, I mean, stalwarts have come on this platform in global structure. And today, Dr. Sanma has been a part of this platform also. So this uh, Indian 75 years independent. So that, that, that's a great, uh, Dr. Agrawal, for your, uh, you know, Thank you, sir. Resilience, resilience for <laughs> throughout the year, we've been managing it. You know? So thank you very much for organizing this session. I'm thank sorry. you, thank you, Dr. Tibadi ji, for chairing this session and for giving your uh, concluding remarks. And thanks to Dr. Sharma for excellent talk. Uh, I think it has ignited many, many minds. A lot of questions, uh, not only uh, complimenting you, but curious to know the same thing for snakes, for peacocks, for every kind of uh, wildlife, uh, which is affecting their fields, their their colonies, their cities, whatever is there. So I think uh, it's a big problem. Uh, it looks like from this, uh, from the comments uh, of all the participants. So thank you very much once again, uh, Dr. Sarma, and uh, I thank uh, all my participants, uh, our uh, August audience, uh, who have gathered in a, uh, in a big number. It's not only the number of participants, but it is being live streamed in many halls. Uh, I got a message from Assam Education University. I got a message from many universities that they are live streaming in a hall where number of students are sitting there. So it's so, so important to know. Uh, people, people are really querying that, what do you mean by elephant men of uh, India? So do they have number of more animal uh, elephants or what is that? <laughs> so anyway, uh, the things are uh, very interesting and that kind of affection should be more and more uh, with animals. I think we all should uh, love them. We all should care for them. And, uh, and there should be less and less uh, uh, conflict uh, with the wildlife. So all those things are really uh, very educative and uh, great learning for all of us. So thank you once again, uh, Dr. Sama, uh, for this uh, thank excellent you, talk thank you very much. and for agreeing this. Thank you. And namaskar to all, everybody. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you sir. Namaskar. Dr. Sharma, please speak. Sir, thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Please. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So I think we should close the meeting ourselves. We can close. Yeah. So uh, now again, I think on, on 18th, again, we have got a very good lecture. Now let me announce here. On 18th, uh, we have a lecture from uh, Professor Madan, Emil Madan, and the lecture will be at 11 o'clock. Designer technology for productivity increase among livestock. So I request all of you to please, you know, I may have to remind you again, though you will get a link, but I request all of you to please attend this in large numbers. Because Professor Madan is, a, is a one of the most, you know, scientists and orator in, in animal science. 
So I think you must attend it and get benefited. Thank you very much. We'll be able to share with the link and other things. Thank you, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar.